Hey, everybody. Welcome back to our podcast where we agree to disagree on a lot of different things. Today's episode is mental blocks and mental health. That's a fun one. That sounds good. It's a deep one. (laughs) It sounds good. (laughs) Um, These are important topics to talk about, especially in today's world. So we hope to kind of open up the conversation. Um, but we wanted to just disclaimer, kind of state the obvious that we're not trained professionals. We're not counselors or therapists. So, you know, take everything we say with a grain of salt. Um, we also know that people experience this on different levels. Um, and so we want to be sensitive to that. We understand there's no like one size fits all answer. So these are just our thoughts, our experiences maybe on the topic. Um, but first let's talk about what a mental block is. Do you want to read the definition for us? Yeah. According to the internet, a mental block is a psychological obstacle or eliminating mindset that prevents you from contemplating important tasks and achieving success. So some examples would be like self-doubt, uncertainty, comparison, indecision, and limiting mindset. Tunnel vision, sudden fears, (laughs) being stuck in a slump. You can say the last one. And performance anxiety. For, for those of you, you that are not on YouTube, Mello's saying hi. I think we right. just need to put her in there the closet. There you go, Mello. See, the problem with Mello, everybody, is that if we if we lock her in a room, then she'll just cry the whole time. And so we're recording a podcast, and we can hear her crying for an hour straight. She'll be good. She's just, she just wanted to say hi. All right. Um, okay, so the biggest question is, have you ever dealt with mental blocks? And it's kind of funny because Michaela gets this question all the time. Like, all, all the, the time. time. From from everyone, like a lot from gymnasts, but a lot from like like other people too. It kind of surprises me. They're just I don't know. It just this question comes up all the time. We made a YouTube video about it a while ago. Michaela was working with a mental training coach. Shout out to Clay. Um, and th- I don't know. I don't want to answer for you, but that's kind of the funny thing is that you've never really had <laughs> mental blocks. You yeah, know, yeah, I've never really had a mental block because I have been really lucky throughout my gymnastics career where I mean even ever since I was a little kid like when I was I think I want to say like three years old my dad was working outside and he was up on the ladder and my parents couldn't find me and I ran outside and I climbed up the ladder and I was hanging from the top of it so ever since I was really little I've just been really gutsy I've never been afraid of heights in gymnastics I just went for things like I did not care if I was going to hurt myself. I would just go for it. And through my whole gymnastics career, I honestly like can say I've never had a mental block. Like I've always just gone for it. And even though like I've crashed and hurt myself, yeah, I'll get freaking scared and like not want to do it. But I just get myself to do it because I'm like, I have to just conquer my fears, you know, like I just got to do it. And I wanted to be good. So that's just I just did it. And I'd have to say coming back from the Olympics or coming back to train for the Olympics, I was definitely more scared in my life than I'd ever been in gymnastics just because after taking, you know, like three years off of, off of elite gymnastics and going to college, I still competed some of my hard skills, but then like kind of getting older, I realized how easy it was to hurt yourself. So it definitely freaked me out. But there were multiple times where I did hurt myself and my coach, Bob, I was, when I came back, we were trying to figure out a different bar routine and it actually like just worked out way better. Like I'm like, man, I wish I'd have had this bar routine years ago, but I ended up going Ray right into a pack. And I remember I was like learning it really fast and Bob was like, okay, I'm not really going to stand here on this one, my coach. And I go for it and it was really good. But then right when my hands got to the bar for the pack, I threw my head out and my arms missed the bar and I banged my chin on the bar and my mouth was like hurting and I was like bleeding in my mouth. (laughs) And I was like, well, this really sucks. And I was like shaking and I was like, I don't think this is going to work. And then the next day, well, it was a Saturday workout, I think. And then the next day we had Sunday. So Sunday we had off. So then Monday I just went back in and I kept doing it. Bob obviously was spotting me more until I got a little more used to, I think it was just a little too soon to like not really spot me. And so anyway, it was going really good. It's just that like at the last second, since I didn't feel his hands, I kind of like didn't know where I was. So I threw my head out. But other than that, 
I just went back into the gym after banging my face and I kept, I still did it. And then I had it in my routine. So, um, yeah, obviously things are scary and it happens and you just also have to think about with skills, like it might happen again, but it's usually not going to happen again. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. usually it's every so often you just do something funky and crazy. I feel like after you do it, you kind of learn like, okay, I'm not going to do that again. So anyway, that's kind of my story. I've never really had a mental block. But it's a it's a common thing in gymnastics, right? Very common. Lots of girls have it. Why lots, is that? Because girls. it's. It, I feel like I'm just rare. I think <laughs> there's just something about me. Like I just think a lot of people don't know. Like I mean, a lot of people know I'm like competitive and like hardworking, but like I just don't think people really understand that. Like I feel like I'm just a rare athlete. Like. I don't know. There's not a lot of me out there. Not saying I'm like the best gymnast in the world, but just like the way I do things and persevere through it and keep going. And I don't let anything stop me. And I work really hard and I don't give up. Like, like even Bob's just like, there's so many times where like, I'm like, man, is she like going to quit? And I just like get back up and I keep going. (laughs) Even if I'm crying and bawling, I just figure it out. I just keep pushing through. So a lot of, a lot of people just don't have that mindset either. Like, elite gymnastics is not for everybody like if you're not mentally and physically tough it's just not gonna work it's just not because it's just so hard so why do you think gymnasts struggle with mental blocks more than other athletes because that was one thing that clay said because gymnastics is scary (laughs) so it's just the fear aspect yes you're like on these different apparatuses okay and you do one little thing wrong and it's like like on vault you don't make it to the board or your feet going between the board and the safety zone and you like crunch Ugh. and then you crunch into the vault or there's a lot of girls that will be running and trip in their run and then stick their arm out and break it. Like, it's just like, there's so many things that can go wrong, especially if you're not like focused. Like there's so many times where I was so tired in gymnastics that I just like, I was like, I, I have to be focused because I'm going to hurt myself if I don't. And like in gymnastics, like you're tired. Oh, it doesn't matter. You just got to keep going, you know? And so I don't know how I was able to push through it, honestly. It was so hard, but, I mean, I guess that's what it took to go to the Olympics, so I just did it. But I think a lot of kids are just really scared. It's like they do one thing wrong. Like, a lot of kids don't like doing back handsprings because they're freaked out to go backwards and go onto their hands, right? Like, you Mm. don't like doing backflips, but you'll do a front flip any day. That's true. Right? Because you're Mm -hmm. like, it's scary going backwards. Like, what if I land on my neck? And there's tons of gymnasts that do that when they're learning. And then after that, they're just scarred for life. They're like, I can't do it. I don't want to do that again. You know what I mean? But it's like a lot of times kids will get their back handspring and it'll be totally fine. And then they have like one wrong accident where they just do something stupid. And then after that, they get a mental block because they get into their head. Because like everything's in your head. It's all in here. Like if you can tell yourself to just like go for it and be powerful and be strong you can do it. Your body knows how to do it. You've done it multiple times. It's just, you let fear get in there and it just really messes with people. But like, it's hard because I've never had that. So like I, (laughs) when people like all these gymnasts will ask me like, what do you do? What do you do? I'm like, honestly, I don't know. Like, just go for it. Like, you know how to do it. Your body knows how to do it. So just do it. Like you're going to get hurt in gymnastics. I don't know how many times I've fallen. I've crouched the beam. I've slid down the beam, but I still keep doing my skills because a hundred times before that turn, I was able to make it. I was able to do it. It's just things happen sometimes. You can't be perfect every time. So I think for me, I'm like, well, I know how to do this skill. So So are the twisties a form of a mental block or is it different, do you think? Um, I think it turns into a mental block kind of for sure because like I had that one time where I was like, twisting in the air and I get lost and a lot of times that's kind of where the twisties happen it's just like it's like a fluke thing like when you crotch the beam sometimes you just like crotch the beam and sometimes when you're twisting your body will get like stuck or something happens and then after that you're kind of like whoa that was scary and weird and then you're like am I gonna be able to like twist again you know so I think a lot of it is a, it turns into a mental block after that so like a lot of times gymnast will need to like go back home and go into the pit and like start from scratch so like or like go on soft landing so you'll have to go and do round off back handspring full round off back handspring one and a half round off back handspring double full and so um kind of using a Simone for an example like it was hard for her because 
at the Olympics, we don't have any soft landing, soft equipment. Like we're literally in training halls, like in the practice gyms that everything's like on concrete. We just have floor vault bars beam. Everything's on concrete. It's hard surfaces. When we compete in elite gymnastics, a lot of girls, like not even in college, you're not really on podium till like nationals. You might have one other meet where you're on podium. And then the rest of it, you're just in the college gyms on the floor. And so your body tends to break down. It hurts a lot. And at the Olympics, like all we had was podium for the Olympics for when we competed. And then the training halls, everything was on the ground. So Simone... It was hard because she we were doing such hard skills that if something goes wrong, you're literally going to hurt yourself. Like you don't have soft equipment like in your gym to go back and like be careful and start doing the basics. So that's where Simone, it was just really hard for her. So honestly, like she was really smart about it. Like vault was where it happened and she knew like I physically can like not do that. Like it's scary, like especially on vault when you don't have like soft landings because even in the gym, Before I went to the Olympics, I never trained on hard surface ever. I was always on the pit and we would set it up to kind of be hard, but it always have a little bit of a give. And so to kind of make it harder, we would just maybe stack the mats up a little bit higher than like normal, just so like Mm -hmm. I knew that like when I went to hard surface that I could make it, you know, and I was prepared. So honestly, like, yeah, Simone, yeah, just could not like that just would have been really bad. I think if she just would have tried and kept doing the same thing, cause it was scary. So, and you guys, she did try and was still doing kind of weird things. So honestly, she was really smart about it. So anyway, it kind of sucks because yeah, you get into your head and I have had it happen to me once where like I had vaulted or like one time. Okay. I guess this doesn't really count because I was doing my double double laid out onto like the floor onto a resi pit one time and my coach Bob kind of gave me a bump because I hadn't done it in a while and I was doing my double double laid out and because he bumped me it kind of like messed up my twist like it just messed me up my timing and so I ended up doing like this one and a half twist and landing straight on my back. So imagine like if you were on the floor, like you would have literally killed yourself. I don't normally like having spot on floor and stuff, usually just like bars and like my beam dismount. And so after that, Bob was like, okay, I'm not touching you. Like, you know, like <laughs> you, you, you know how to do it. I'll just catch you on the landing. So if something happens, you know, I'll be there for the landing of it. So anyway, that like kind of freaked me out. But like, honestly, I knew it was because he bumped me. So then I went back, did it again, and I was just fine. The only time I've really ever had it was like on vault. There would be a couple times where you kind of like crunch into the table and you twist, but you don't have enough power. So, you know, you're kind of twisting, doing the same thing. So I've done like a one and a half mm-hmm. before to my back or like a full to my side or like weird things like that. But then I'm like, oh, well, I know it's just because I got crunched onto the table. So it messed up my timing and my twist. So kind of I'll get nervous and stuff. And I'm like, oh, that was freaky. You know, my body's like, like, you know, am I, do I remember how to twist after that? And then I kind of just take a deep breath. I walk down to the end of the vault table and I just go again and I'm fine. But most gymnasts after that, they get into their head. So then they like forget how to twist. It's the weirdest thing. I honestly don't even know how it works. It's just weird, but it happens. So anyway, I hope that kind of helps in a way. (laughs) But like, honestly, I've just never had it happen to me but I've seen girls in the gym have it so many times and they just it sometimes they'll have it for a couple weeks they'll have it for months they'll have it for a day they just kind of have to go back and start from the basics like do a full do a one and a half you know so anyway I'm just really lucky I've never had that problem Mm -hmm. so yeah I was gonna say I don't I don't think I've ever I mean the sports that I played growing up I, there wasn't a whole lot of opportunity for mental blocks I feel like you know I did a lot of track and cross country well yeah it is soccer it is weird when you think about it like I like what other sport would you have a mental block I mean there's the yips in baseball you know where it's kind of like the twist is you just can't hit the ball I've heard that but I don't get that how do you just not hit the I ball? mean but there's also in basketball there's shooting slumps you know it happens to the What's best that mean? um so like Steph Curry like we'll just ran he's like the best shooter of all time but like he'll just randomly have a month where he's just just can't make a shot. It's just terrible. You know, like it just happens, you know, it happens to a lot of people. I guess that'd be a form of mental block, but yeah, I've never really. Mm. Yeah. How in baseball do you can, they just can't take the bat and hit it. Well, I mean, baseball is so hard because 
the it's a little ball and it's going at you so fast, like 90 miles an hour, mm-hmm. and the bat's not that thick. So it's like right. you have to be perfect to hit it. And so if you just have a little doubt in your head or, you know, just a little mental block, like to the smallest degree, it's easy to just miss it every time. Yeah, but it's so weird because that to me just doesn't seem like a <laughs> mental block. That just seems like, okay, I messed up, you know? Yeah, well, it's, it's, a, it's a real thing. It's called the yips. I mean, I've heard about it, but that just seems a little. Well, that's what people thought about the twisties. That was one thing that was hard for me, I'm sure for you, is seeing like people on social media talk bad about Simone because they just didn't understand, you know? Right. And I wouldn't have understood if you hadn't explained it to me because that's such a new concept for, because like ever watching the Olympics, pretty much the majority of the audience are just casual, you know, like, mm-hmm. oh, we just watched the Olympics, right? We watch gymnastics. So they don't really understand. And so there's a lot of people that, you know, were kind of hating on her for, you know, they were calling it giving up or whatnot, but it's like, it's a real thing. And if, you know, it, that's scary stuff. If you mess up in the air, you can break your neck, you know? Um, and I know it's I hard because like I've tried putting myself in her shoes and like because I've never like had that. So for me, I'm like, man, I just wouldn't think about it. I'll just freaking go. You know, like I'm at the freaking Olympics, like let's freaking go. You know, like I just wouldn't like it's hard to like because I've yeah, never, never really know. gone through that. But then it's then I have to take a step back and be like, OK, I've seen a lot of people go through that. And it is a really scary thing. And if she's just not in the right place right now and like imagine all the pressure and, you know, the people being rude, it would be hard to even get your mindset back to like to that place that you were before. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, well, so it's I, like I, the way I think of it is like, if you asked me to do her vault, I, I would probably break my neck, you know, <laughs> like if I tried. Right. Yeah. So I, I, it makes sense to me, you know, the more I've heard that like, you talk about, well, it's hard about it. because you know, you know, Simone's the goat, you know, she's the greatest of all time. So for them, they're just like, well, she's never had this happen. So like, how could this, how could she do this at the Olympics? But it's like, well, it just sucks. It was the wrong time, the wrong place. You know, it just, it happens to everyone. It's like when your dad got in the accident, it's like, was he planning on that to happen right before we were supposed to go to Spain? No. You know, it's Mm. like things just happen. It's like, even when you compete and you, and I, and you fall, like kind of like I was telling the girls, I, I just had this weekend, I just had my first ever Michaela Skinner, never give up invitational cool meet so cool so i I have a meet after named after me and there's three of them this year so i'm leaving next week to go from wednesday to sunday so where is it indiana and virginia indiana and virginia so the next one's indiana um anyway it's a lot of fun it's really cool it's way different than any other meet like i'm there the whole time i'm talking to all the girls through all the sessions and it was so cool to get like the parents feedback obviously I tried not to be around the parents a lot, but if I had to go to the bathroom, it was, I had to walk kind of past the parents and obviously they were telling, you know, LR Productions are the ones that helped me with my meet. They were telling them, like giving them feedback, but some of the parents would be like, this was the best meet ever. Like we've never experienced anything like this. This was so great for my daughter because, you know, most Olympians don't get to sit there and talk to these athletes. Like I never had that as a kid. And you know, watching those girls struggle and get frustrated when they fall or this or that. And I'm like, you know, just going up to them and being like, it's okay. Like I'm an Olympian and I still made mistakes, especially like back in 2016, we were competing at championships. And I kept telling this story because, you know, things happen to the best of us, no matter how hard we train, how perfect we think our routines are going to be that day. Like we just never know what's going to happen. And, you know, at championships that's where they name the national team and so the national team only the national team goes to olympic trials and i had hit four events the first day this was second day of competition we were going into the last event and it was beam and i just like hate ending on beam because like (laughs) you know it takes a lot it's mentally hard and you have to be totally focused and beam to like i just get so nervous on beam that like i get nervous watching beam yeah i just hate beam i even was telling this to the girls at the meet i'm like you guys hate beam like yeah and i'm like yeah i hate beam too like i totally get it but like (laughs) it's one of the events we have to compete so we have to do it anyway so like you got to learn how to build that confidence in yourself and know that like you aren't always going to be perfect and that's okay but you can strive for perfection anyway as competing at championships i was the last girl up out of the whole meet. So like pressure was on. I was like, for some reason, I just did not feel confident at all. And I'm just like, I just kind of knew like, this is not going to be good, which just like (laughs) that. I'm just like, I just didn't even want to go, but like, you know, I have to. So I was trying to be positive, 
trying to focus and I salute the judges, you know, go up, do my, I did a punch front mount up onto the beam. I fell. So I'm like, well, that's annoying. It's the first thing in my routine. So then I was already like, okay, like got to finish the rest of the team now. Can't fall on the hard stuff, you know? Then my next skill is my series, my flick tuck full series, which is really hard. And I go and I do it and it was fine because one of my legs came up. Like I kind of put my leg up and I kind of like was like leaning. So I was kind of starting to fall. So I kind of like hopped my leg that I was standing on. I was like kind of like hop, hop. And then I went to bring this foot down and I didn't get it all the way on the beam. And I just like, it like slid and I just fell and crotched the beam. And I'm like, seriously? <laughs> like what? So then me being dumb, like I'm already tired. It's the last event. I was kind of in a bad mood because I had already fallen twice. So then we get to the dismount. And of course, like at this point, like I wasn't that strong with doing a full in dismount. Like I could do it sometimes. Sometimes I couldn't. Anyway, I was supposed to do my round off full in dismount. And my coach is trying to yell at me, just do the double back. Just do the double back. And I still go for a full in dismount. I'm like, what's the point of that? Like my routine's already going to suck the score anyway. So why would he, why even go for that? And I went for the full in. I didn't hear my coach. I went for the full in and landed on my face. So <laughs> three falls on beam. I was so do mortified. Think, do you think that was a mental block or was it just you just kept messing up? No, that was definitely not a mental block. That's not where I'm going with this. I'm just saying like, I was just curious. I'm just saying about like, you know, things happen to people and it's, you know, you don't always expect it. And it was so embarrassing. And then I was like, is this going to cause me to like not make Olympic trials, you know? And Marta actually came over and she was really nice to me. Like I was, I mean, she was a little intense, but like, she was just like, you know, like things happen. And she had told me there was some other, that happened to like some other girl, I forget her name, but it was right before Olympic trials too. And she did the same thing. And then she just ended up being fine because it happened, you know? And so anyway, she was just like, get ready, like get ready for Olympic trials. Like just work really hard. You'll be fine. Like get back into the gym. So like after that, I was like, this is not happening to me ever again. So literally those two weeks I had before Olympic trials, I just busted it out. I was like, I'm not falling on <laughs> one single routine. And I don't think I like fell on one single routine. I just like, me like I just mentally was prepared. I was like, I'm doing everything I can. I'm going to make this Olympic team, you know? And so then at Olympic trials, I hit four for four both, both days, ended up fourth in the all around. Yeah, I didn't make the Olympic team, but I ended up fourth in the all around. And, you know, I was able to come back from it because I didn't let it set me back. I was like, I'm not going to let that stop me. You know, fluky things happen. So yes, Beam was very nerve wracking at Olympic trials. I was about to like throw up, but I definitely got my confidence back and made it work. So Things can happen. It just happens. Twisties happen. That's true. Got some stats for you. Um, so we're going to kind of switch gears to mental health. Unless you have anything else to say about mental blocks. Not really because I don't really have any. <laughs> yeah, so I'm kind of sad because <laughs> having this topic, I'm like, oh. I wish I like was more help to it. But I'm just not. And I mean, I like Jonah said, I had a mental coach so that that really helped me a lot, even though I've always kind of had stuff like that from time to time. And I hated it because as an athlete, like I knew my gymnastics, I've done gymnastics for how long, you know? And so I was like, I know what I need to do. I know myself better than anybody else. No one needs to tell me what to do. And then when I ever had a mental coach, they would just put stuff into my head. And then I started messing up and I was like, okay, I don't like this. Like you're not helping. Like and I think some gymnasts really do need it, especially like when you have mental blocks and you have issues. Like I think having a mental coach is really important. And then when I got to college, we had one, but it was like more just like positive things. And it was really awesome. And talking about breathing and, and not like focusing on the things you can control and the things that you can't like when you go to a meet, yes, like it's a bars, beam, floor and vault. Yes. Sometimes it feels different, especially with the equipment's newer. Like sometimes at your gym, your equipment's older. And so like things feel different. Like, yeah, it's a bar, but like the wood could just be a different type of wood, even though it's like supposed to be the same, but they all feel different. And so that's just something you like can't think about. You know, it's just a bars, beam and floor involved. Remember, you know how to do it. Well, I remember that was one thing that you and Clay talked about a lot was because you would complain about equipment that wasn't a certain brand, remember? Yes, and it, it, that that does mess you up, though. I when know, it's a I different know, brand, it's I way different that. than AAI, you know? <laughs> I, but I remember he spent a lot of time talking to you about right. it. Right. 
Because the things that you and Clay talked about wasn't really mental blocks. It was more like attitude and I'm trying to remember. I don't know, like even just venting. Like he, he, yeah. he would just help me get through venting and like how to get better at controlling certain things like through my workout and different things like that. So it wasn't like telling me like, oh, you need to do this differently and that differently. It was more just like helping me to be better, to be happier, to be able to get through it, to be able to talk to your coach when something's happening, like, cause you don't want to hurt yourself. So being able to like speak up and having that communication. And he's like, if you're too scared to do it, I'll say something, you know, like he was always there to be like, I'll say something to her if need be, you know, cause like, yeah, I definitely got better at speaking up to Lisa, but there are still times where I still had like PTSD and I was just scared to like, cause I didn't want her to think like I wasn't working hard, you know? Mm-hmm. So different things like that. But yeah, he was really good. He definitely helped a lot. Like I usually don't like having a mental coach or trainer. And in college, it was kind of like the same thing. He actually was taught by, um, I forget her name now because I haven't been in college forever. Um, but he was trained by her because he went oh, to the, the U. The U. Oh, yeah. Cool. So, that. yeah. So a lot of like similar things and he had his own techniques and a lot of really good things. But anyway, so that helped a lot. Um but yeah, so anyway, growing up, I just didn't like it because I knew how to do my gymnastics. I didn't need anybody else telling me how to do it. I don't even know where we were going with this, but. Well, we were just switching gears from mental blocks to mental health. So that's yeah. all we have for mental blocks. Some stats on mental health. So according to the National Institute of Mental Health, mental health struggles are very common in the United States. Globally, it is estimated that one in seven so it's 14% of 10 to 19-year-olds experience mental health conditions. These remain largely unrecognized and untreated. Nearly one in five U.S. adults live with a mental illness, 52 million in 2020. And mental illness includes many different conditions that vary in degree of severity, ranging from mild to moderate to severe. So have you ever struggled with mental health? If so, how so? How did you feel? Did it come out of nowhere? How did you get through it? I don't really want to say because you're going to get mad at me for calling I won't, out. I won't get mad at you. Um, well, I don't know. What is I it? mean, the first part of, like, mental health is I, like, want, it doesn't have anything to do with gymnastics. Well, it did ruin my gymnastics, and I did have a hard time with gymnastics for a little bit. But just a boyfriend I had in high school that was literally, like, a dirtbag. Like, piece that, of crap. I'm sorry. Like so bad played with me cheated on me just horribly like it was so it was just so bad and he was like my first boyfriend I you know like and for like at least for like the first year we dated it was really good you know like and then it just got you know going into senior year of high school and his friends and like he wasn't he I don't even know if it's true or not but like he they their family acted kind of like they were members of the church or were once upon a time but he wasn't really active in the church so that was like really hard for me but I really liked him and I always thought that like I could change that and like help him to start so going to just, church you mean you just had different standards different standards yeah and he was still really respectful of me like because I still went to church I I loved the church and but then it was like the second we got into like senior year of high school it was like his friends wanted to drink so then like he started drinking and then he started getting tattoos. And at the time, like, you know, I feel like tattoos are just kind of different nowadays. Like our church has just always high school. It's you're just, that's just, well, yeah. Well, and like, yeah, yeah, but but in our church, you're not really, you know, like shouldn't put markings on your body because your body's like a temple. Like I'm just being real here, you know? And yes, I have a tattoo. I have the Olympic rings. It's really small. But, um, anyway, I just, at the time I just really like, didn't really like tattoos and I didn't like the way they looked. And, Um, so then he started doing all that and just kind of was started going downhill and just really treated me badly. And then like kind of was dating this other girl, but then coming back to me and saying, I love you. I want to be with you. Like you're the one I want to be with. And then the next day he's out hanging out with her and it was just very, there's a lot to it. I don't need to sit here and explain it. I've I've heard that. Yes. Anyway, well, I'm just letting them know. I'm not telling this to you. I was worried you'd keep going on. No, I'm not going to. It's just, it's a lot. The point is. Anyway, it really messed me up. I got super depressed. Like. There was a time where, like, I lost, like, 10 pounds, and you guys know, like, I already don't weigh that much, and I would just sit on the couch, and I was crying, and I'm like, this is so stupid over a stupid boy, like, this is just dumb, like, I don't even know why I'm even in a relationship, like, I should have just never dated, like, dating in high school is like, yeah, you need to get experience and whatever, but, like, it was honestly just, like, a waste of time, and I don't even know why I put so much time and effort into it. Anyway, 
I was just super depressed and I could barely go to gym. There's a couple of times like I just couldn't go to gym. And then I had a training camp coming up, a national team camp. And I just remember Marta going up to Lisa and saying like, Ooh, wow, Michaela's looking really skinny. Like, cause Marta liked it, you know? And That's you sad. know, Lisa was just kind of like, Oh yeah, she like recently had the flu or something, you know? So she kind of lost some weight. She was sick, but it was, no, I was just like really depressed. That was like the first time I've ever felt like depressed. It was weird to me. So anyway, I think that was the only time I really felt depressed. And then I feel like I haven't really, I mean, I guess I kind of have told you I've been a little depressed, like trying for a baby. Like it's been really, really hard. I know this doesn't have anything to do with gymnastics, but I guess we're talking about mental health yeah, and depression. But like, you know, one of my best friends got pregnant back when we went to Hawaii. And at the time, like I was so excited for her. She was trying for a year and you guys know, like, I'm only 26, but I feel kind of old having a kid because I'm like, well, what if it takes me a while to get pregnant? And then, you know, what if I have to do IVF or different things? And so then it's like, okay, so I'm 26 now, and then you have to be pregnant for nine months. So, like, what if I'm almost 30 having my first, which, like, I know it's not old, and that's, and that's when a lot of people start to have kids, you know, but like for me, like I want to be a young mom. My mom had me when she was 40 and I just was like, I just want to be young. My sister was young when she had all of her kids. She's done having kids now. And then, then they'll still be young enough that when her kids are out of the house, like they'll still have time to go and travel and do a lot of things. So that's where I'm just like, I don't want to be like almost 40. Like I don't want to be done having kids at like 35 and I'm almost 40. I know that's still young, but that's just me. Everybody's different. And so my friend Chloe She's only 24. She's 24, so she got pregnant at 23. And so, like, it was fine, but, like, it's just been hard for me because, like, it took her a year to get pregnant. And so, like, I'm just kind of, like, it was, like, hard because I was trying to be supportive, but I'm, like, well, you're only 23. Like, you know, just, like, take time. You'll be fine. You'll get there, you know. And then we went to Hawaii, and she went home and ended up being pregnant. And it didn't really hit me till like, you know, months went on and then it started like making me depressed because like I've been wanting a baby for a long time, but I was just trying to tell myself like, no, it's fine. And Jonas wasn't ready. And so it was just really like, it was just like weighing on me a lot. And it was like, you know, everything's baby. Like she's becoming a mom, everything's baby. And it's just like, it was just so draining on me. So I kind of had to take a step back for a little bit. And then it was like, since I've been trying like my nail tech, like this, this week's kind of been okay, but last week, I, I have to be honest, like, it really hit me hard because my nail tech and I both started trying at the same time, and then last time I got my nails done, she's like, I'm pregnant, <laughs> and, like, of course, I'm super excited, but it, like, started, like, kind of weighing on me, but I'm like, oh, that's okay, like, you know, my time will come, so then I go to church, and one of my friends at church... Can you stop saying like? Sorry. <laughs> You're good. Just like, like, like. Me. Okay, so anyway, so then I go to church... And my friend that's sitting next to me is, is says, <laughs> I'm, says, I'm eight weeks pregnant. And I'm like, oh, okay. So then I go to get my hair done and I've become really good friends with my hair tech and her sister, her younger sister. And she goes, I'm pregnant. And then her sister was pregnant. Her younger sister is pregnant, but then had a miscarriage recently. But then she goes, yeah, she's already pregnant again. So we're both pregnant. And then I was like, oh, that's so exciting. But like, I was just, it's just like hard when like people are younger than you and they're all getting pregnant and like, I've been wanting kids forever. And so I just like, like I was almost about to start to cry when I was getting my hair done, but I was like trying not to, cause I was so happy for her. I'm like, that is so exciting. Like, cause I want people to be happy for me when I get pregnant, you know, and I, I am happy for them, but it, it does take a toll on you too, you know? And then I come home and I get a message from, I, I, not going to say names, but anyway, she's friends with people I know. And she just started trying like maybe two or three months ago. And she goes, you can't tell so-and-so because I haven't told them that yet because we kind of been talking. and I've been like supporting her and helping her through it a little bit. And she goes, I'm pregnant. So within like a week or, or like within those two weeks, it was like 10 people announcing like I'm pregnant or just telling me they're pregnant. And so it's like one thing to like see on social media and see friends that you haven't talked to in a while. But anyway, it was hard having close friends do that. So I, I was kind of feeling really depressed. And so I kind of just had to take a step back and I didn't hang out with anybody. I just kind of sat at home. And then I've kind of like 
just started feeling better. I'm like, you know what? It's okay. Can you not get mad at me for talking? I'm just, <laughs> I'm telling people how I feel. I, I know, know no, it's kind you, of long, you keep but saying like, sorry, it's just, and now I can't get it out of my head. Whatever. Anyway, it once. it's just, it's been really hard. It's hard. Mm-hmm. And I know like I have my own timeline and it will happen. I just need to give it time, but it's just hard when you want something so bad and you like can't have it, you know? So, yeah. No, I agree. Anyway, <laughs> I, a lot of my friends at Burn Boot Camp have been like super supportive and like just talking to me and it has really helped me like I feel like feel better about it. So trying to be positive and not think about things. But anyway, those are like maybe my two moments of like kind of feeling depressed. And in gymnastics, I think a little bit after 2016 Olympics, but not fully because then I like kind of just went into college gymnastics and I just kind of moved on from it but anyway what about you um I don't know not really I mean so it's like one of the things I was with work sorry are you gonna jump into that that was (laughs) that wasn't that's a good point (laughs) no that was that was just stress yeah like so I've never really but it messed with your mental health for sure you couldn't sleep and stuff yeah I guess that's true I don't know I've, I don't know, I've had the blues. That's just what I called it growing up, you know. I think definitely the the stigma around mental health is changing for sure because no one really talked about it when I was growing up. I don't know, sometimes you just wouldn't have the best day or week or month. I don't know. Um, I didn't really start hearing more about depression and anxiety and mental health. I feel like it's really just been in the last like six or seven years. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, I was like in between jobs for a little bit at the end of the year. And I, I was totally fine. Like I was confident because I had, I had options and that's the biggest thing. I think it'd be different if I had no options. We were, you know, going to be homeless. Does everybody know you have a new job? I don't know. That's a good point. We really like said, I don't don't know if we've said on here. Well, I have a new job, everybody. I think you kind of mentioned it, but yeah, I work for gig. So we're, not we're not like a marketing agency we're more of a marketing machine so we work with agencies we work with big brands um michael buble is a client of ours so michaela skinner is a client of ours or a a former client (laughs) from a long time ago though that's when gig hadn't really like taken off yet yeah so so it's exciting but anyways there was a time where i was like kind of before i'd officially accepted and after i had left my previous job there was a good month or so, maybe a month and a half where I was interviewing and I was looking at other jobs. And I don't know, that whole process just kind of stressed me out. I think what stressed me out the most was not that I didn't have options, but, but that I did have options. I had a few really good options. And so what stressed me out was making the wrong choice. So yeah, I'd say that definitely took a toll on my mental health because it was harder for me to sleep at night because I would, <laughs> I would just stay awake just thinking of the different options that I had and what should I do. And um, and it, it, it was different too. going from a nine to five every day to then, you know, when I quit, I, I made looking for a job, my new full-time job, but that's not really, you know, so like my schedule was off. So yeah, so it was a little different, you know? Mm-hmm. So I guess I've had, I've had moments like that where I've just been stressed, but I don't know if I've really had too much of a run in with mental health. Um, Here's a question for you. Do you think men are as open as women when it comes to talking about mental health? No. <laughs> I'd say definitely no. Yeah, like I don't even, I don't know, I don't think I've ever, I mean, I, I'm i pretty close with a lot of my friends and, you know, we'll talk about life and stuff, like if we're stressed or something's going mm-hmm. on, but we never really talk about, I think, I think, I also think it's not just that we don't talk about it as much, but I don't think, well, I don't, this could be wrong. Just from just my experiences, the people I know, I feel like the men that I know haven't gone through mental health issues as much as the women I know. Well, I think it's just harder for women because, like, we want to feel pretty. We want to, you know, just like, you yeah, know, with social media, all the things. It's, it's hard like, to be a girl in the world. I feel like it's just sure. a lot harder to be a girl and feel good about yourself, which is weird. It's weird that it's like that. But And girls like to talk about their problems more than men do like men just kind of like move on they're like oh, okay it is what it is move on you know girls yeah. like kind of hold a grudge for a little bit and it takes us a while to get over it or we just need to like vent or i don't know all the things but <laughs> it's kind of rough being a girl 
Yeah. I've Everything's got, a lot more money. We have to get our nails done, our hair done. Like, guys just wake up and they look good. You're like, it's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's definitely, that's a big part of it. So, yeah, and then I don't, we don't really talk about it a whole lot because I don't really have too many issues and yours <laughs> are, like, pretty apparent, you know? So it's like I know if you've got anxiety because of this reason or if you've, you know, got depression because of this reason or, you know, what whatnot. Mm-hmm. So... Well, a lo- going to anxiety, though, a lot of people in my family have anxiety. So I definitely do think I have it, but I definitely don't have it as bad. Um, and I've never been, like, on medicine because, like, I can function. I've done everything. But I do catch myself getting anxiety from time to time. But I'm also kind of like, I don't know if, like, it's worth being on medicine and stuff. Because I don't think I have it that bad, but it's definitely there. Um. I don't know. Jonas thinks I should be put on this. Well, I think you should try it. I don't know. Well, it's hard to because well, like, also because people are like, "Oh, you can gain weight on medicine." Well, that's what I'm saying. Stuff, just so try like, it because, like, I know plenty of people that have gone on anxiety medications and say it's changed their lives. You know, it's helped. Yeah. Right. It's just like, you know, you like you take ibuprofen if you're sore. You know, I like know, but I've always wondered, like, does it actually work, or is it just because I? S- it's like the placebo effect. I'm like. <laughs> Well, is I this mean, really working? Is my body just like, oh, I took Advil, I'm good now, and then I just go? You well, know, I'm yeah, like, but it does, <laughs> wait, I, I mean, see I'm sure it, it helps. It doesn't sure, really matter as long as it works, you know, whether guess, it's real or not. If, know. You know, so that's what I'm saying. I just don't like being on medicine. Like, I don't want to be on medicine unless like have to be on medicine. That's my thing. Like, I agree. I feel it's that it's bad putting all that crap in your body. So I'm just like, eh. Hey, you could try the carnivore diet. I have a friend who had. Yeah, but what's the point of doing that for two weeks and then? Oh, just so I don't just have to see. I don't know. Mm, well, because it's it's not about eating meat as much as it is about eliminating all the crap that we normally eat. So it's mm-hmm. just it's really just an elimination diet. Um, but like there's there's a whole lot of processed crap that we eat that could be affecting us. Well, that is affecting mm-hmm. us. So like I had a friend who's always well, struggled with anxiety. Even with pregnancy too, like people have to change their diet. Yeah, you know, stuff. it could be sugar. It could be gluten. Mm-hmm. It could just be the super processed stuff, you know, that they put in the food, you know, it, right. it could be something that exacerbates it. So it's always worth trying like an elimination diet or even trying anxiety meds. If you have your family has history of it. Um, we have a checklist of ways, well, not really a checklist, but just a list of ways you can check in with your significant other to see how they're doing and to kind of help make the environment a little stress-free. Um, so identify what stress looks like to your partner. I think we're pretty good at that because you get really emotional. What do I get like when I'm stressed? Probably the opposite. You just I just need don't, space. Yeah, I, I don't want to talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> um, create a judgment-free environment in your home so they feel comfortable talking to you and want to share things with you. Which is not what Jonas is good at. Disagree. I'm I'm good at that. No, I'm you're like, right. just call your mom. I'm like, no, I want to talk to you, that's though. No, that's if you're complaining. Yeah, but no if matter what If you just want to complain about something. I get that, but like, no Like last what night is, when we were on the phone, I did really good listening to you, but you were ranting on about that one thing. Yeah, because my feelings were hurt. I know, but it wasn't a big deal, and I don't think you understand it wasn't a big deal. I so. know, but it just feels good to talk about it and be like, hey, well, am I, was I a good overthinking listener, right? it or kind of what? when i told you i was gonna start talking about it you're like Ugh. yeah but then i changed my <laughs> attitude kind of okay we're gonna agree to disagree real quick uh, be open with them about how you're doing as well so that they aren't alone instead of asking broad questions like how was your day try things like how are you feeling today encourage open and honest communication within your relationship and if your partner is struggling ask them how you can help hmm. yeah keep these little bullet points on like your computer or something on a sticky note. Jeez, okay. I'll do that. <laughs> I think those are good tips. Those are good. I think, I really think the biggest thing, and again, I I, I wish you know, I could have more empathy just because I've never really struggled with this stuff. So it's hard for me to understand, you know, what someone going through like depression or anxiety or any of those things feels like. But I, I feel like communication is key. Like a lot of times people just need to be, you know, listens to. Yeah, and we're kind of bad at that, I feel like. Well, yeah, that's, that's one thing that's hard. You know, I am I feel like we're good at communication, but we just communicate differently. Mm-hmm. Um, But we are pretty open to each other. I think that's the biggest thing. Like, we both know if we have a problem, we can talk about it. I feel like a lot of times if, if someone 
feels like they can't speak up or can't talk to anyone or they're alone. It just kind of bottles up. So it's always good to have someone, you know, that you can talk to saying you're having a rough time or whatever. Yeah. I'm also just glad that I'm like close with my parents. I know some people don't have a lot of relationships with their family or their parents. And I'm glad that I do have that because like, I know like, like I have you, but like, it is nice. Like, so I don't always have to bug you with things too, just to be able to like talk to my mom. And I know that she's always there for me and she knows how I work and you know, she had to help me get through gymnastics all those years. So that's also like really, really nice to have. Um, yeah, that's true. You know, now that you say you it, know. having a few different people, you know, like my dad is someone I always call when like I've, you know, I'm going through, I wouldn't say like a rough time, but like a big decision or like a stressful choice mm-hmm. or something. I always I like talking to him, working through things. Um, when I was at my previous job, two jobs ago, when I was working with Vivint, I had one friend. Well, I had a few friends, but I had one friend in particular who I would call if I was just struggling because sales is pretty tough because it's really like, especially if you're full commission, you know, you only make money if you make sales. And, so, and it's pretty easy to, you know, go a day or two without making sales. And I was at the point where, like, that should never happen to me just because, you know, I'd, I was good enough. But, like, if I ever got to that point, I had one friend who I would call. And you know who's that? <laughs> you probably know who it is. I'll tell you later. Okay. Um, and, like, not even – it It wasn't even, like, because I needed, like, training or help. I just – almost just a vent. I'm like, dude, like, this – like, like I'm having – you know, this is going on. I have this dry spell. I had this bad luck. And then, you know, he just say something simple. And I'm just like, all right, I just need to get that off my chest. Because I'm not a complainer. Like, I hate – I hate when people complain to me. I try really hard to – and so – He really hates it. And I, like, pretty much never complain myself – and so it would be every once in a while, if it gets really bad, I'd say, hey, just give me, like, two minutes just so I can just get this off my chest. And that's my version of complaining. But I also think it's just, like, a family thing. Like, I feel like your family doesn't really complain. They're just, like... Uh, my siblings complain. I mean, not a lot. I know, but, like, I always feel weird, like, telling your parents stuff because I'm, like, I don't know if they care to, like, listen. Your family does complain. I guess it maybe it is just a family I thing. I think, like, that's just, like, your family. You guys don't really, like, sit there and, like... Like, yeah, you might say things here and there, but, like, I just feel like you... Like, you just don't well, really I put the effort into your complaining. Your family just really likes drama. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so you guys enjoy it. I don't know. But, yeah, so I'll just say having a person to talk to. Anything else you want to add? I think that's it. I think we're ready to go on to the assumption for you, the day. It's a, it's a funny one. You want to read it? Sure. And send us off? Yep. So, as always, we always do an assumption. So if you are new to the podcast, we... Um, had asked on social media for people to submit in their assumptions of us, and that is what we do. So at the end of every episode, we will tell an assumption, and a lot of them are pretty funny. So today's assumption is, at first when you met, you had a hard time opening up to each other about personal stuff. Agree? Disagree. What? What? Yeah, there was right. so much stuff you were, like, pestering me about because I was so nervous to tell you because I thought you were, like, No, I, like when we when we first met... We talked all about your know, gymnastics and stuff. Yeah, this and is life personal. And, okay, well, I, you know, maybe I would agree because I didn't tell you that I got surgery the day after yeah, we that met. Too. Yeah. Um, we always like well, trying to make a good impression, but I feel like when we did first meet, though, we did like hit it off really good, and we just like talked as if like we had known each other. You know, like we were friends. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. But. So we'll. Anyway, we'll, we'll agree on that one. <laughs> no. So. No. Okay, we'll disagree on I that disagree one. On, okay. You can agree. I disagree. We'll disagree on that one. As always, thanks everyone for tuning in. New episodes every Friday. Agree to disagree on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. You got to say something. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say the whole thing. I know, I know. All right, guys. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. We love you all so much. This podcast has seriously been so fun. I'm glad that we can sit on here and just talk and chat, that you guys get to understand and know us a little bit better. And we're just so grateful that we've been able to do this. It's been seriously so fun. So we'll catch you guys next Friday, and we'll see you all very soon. See ya.